No, it's not sunny in Redmond. I'm here in the Silicon Valley at Microsoft Research Center, and I'm here to talk to Jim Gemmel, who's the co-author with Gordon Bell of this great book, Your Life Uploaded, with a great foreword from Bill Gates. We're going to talk about the future of data, and more specifically, the future of personal data, and how it draws parallels with your world with data in the corporate environment. And that's what's next on BITV. What if you could literally have everything your whole life, which is what Bill Gates had originally said. Someday you'll be able to store your whole life digitally. One thing we found is that bringing together disparate data sources is critical. So Jim, I'm a big fan of this book, Your Life Uploaded. Tell us a little bit about what issue it's trying to solve. Well, the premise of the book is we're on the edge of an era that's going to change everything for humans, mm -hmm. where you'll be able to, if you want, recall pretty much everything in your whole life. And this is built on three things, that storage is going crazy, where we just have, we're drowning in it, yeah. where we've got sensors and recording devices like never before, and also we're getting really cool software to do something with it, to data mine it and search and find things. But you've been working on this issue for quite, quite a while now, so how did this even this idea even came about? Well, Gordon Bell and I were working in Jim Gray's lab in San Francisco. And uh, this was the late 90s, and Jim and Tom Barkley had been working on something called the Terra Server, where they were trying to show off that SQL Server could do a whole terabyte of data, which was mm -hmm. a big deal at the time. I think maybe it was even 97. And they were saying, well, how do we fill a terabyte? And it turned out, it's hard. Um, if you just have records, that's a lot of records. Yeah. So they said, well, why don't we try imagery? So then they said, where do we get enough imagery? And they ended up finding some guys who used to work for the KGB and uh, getting <laughs> old KGB spy photographs of uh, aerial imagery. And they did the first kind of Earth view, satellite view, uh, that it was ever put up on the internet. Anyhow, they had a hard time filling that terabyte. Uh -huh. That inspired us. We said, well, gee, if it's so hard to fill up a terabyte, and we're projecting ahead, we said, oh, by about 2007, we'll all have terabytes in our PCs. What does that mean for us? And so I think there's also Bill Gates who wrote a, a foreword for this book that inspired you with his words of, imagine if you could get access to everything about your life. I think a lot of the folks in the audience identified to this issue in their own company. Imagine if you could measure everything that's going on inside your company. Take us through the things that you measure today in your own life. Well, we started with our paper mm -hmm. and saying, so Gordon and I were interested in telepresence at the time telework, and we said, if you're a teleworker, you can't cart around your file cabinets with you. That's crazy. That's right. So the first thing we want to do is go paperless. So Gordon started by go, saying, I'm going to go completely paperless. I'm going to digitize every paper in my life. But once we got going, we said, hey, we're looking ahead to all this storage. Why just paper? So he went crazy with that. He took down all the posters and paintings off his wall and started digitizing those, and he had medals and business cards and anything he could find, he digitized. And it became a quest to say, what if you could literally have everything your whole life, which is what Bill Gates had originally said. Someday you'll be able to store your whole life digitally. So when you're measuring so much or you're recording so much of your activities, are there things that you're learning from the data or how do you, how do you handle so much information and what do you do about it? Well, the first thing that we were looking at was just recall, just mm -hmm. finding things. And you find that when you have a lot of stuff, how do you find it again? In fact, most of it, you don't even remember it's there to go looking for it. But when you do want to find it, hey, there's text search, that's great. But we found, well, you need a little bit more. What if my recollection is, well, it's that document that I opened on that really hot day. Yep. You know, Can I go back in my temperature records and find that? Or I say, it's that, you know, I'm looking for that photo from the time I was in Hawaii. Well, do I have my things geo-referenced so I can pull it up that way? So that was the first thing, just how to put it all together to find things. And then after that, yeah, can we mine stuff? Can we learn? We were recording everything that went on in our PCs. So we kept a copy of every web page we ever saw. We were looking at what windows in the foreground, what programs we were running, and what's going on. And so you could start to mine that and say, well, how do I spend my time? You know, what's kind of my time and motion study? Am I spending too much time in my email? Or am I getting things done? Or am I spending, you know, a long time? 
There are two uh, things I'm, I'm, I'm hearing here that I think would be great benefits for uh, CIOs in, in the audience. Is the first thing is it's really difficult to tell what's useful versus what's useless to start with. You shouldn't assume that there's a particular type of data that you know you absolutely need to measure and a bunch of data that you shouldn't care about because a lot of it is remembering and going, being able to go back to particular instance or particular piece of information you're looking for. The second thing is the benefit around being able to measure so much improves maybe the way you work yourself. I, I know you told me about a story. Is it a, a glass box? You want to tell us about how measuring so much data can actually improve how you work and how you live, I guess. Yeah, there's a wonderful project called Glassbox that they were looking at intelligence analysts and saying, how do these people work? What makes a, one intelligence analyst good and another one less good? And to do that, they instrumented their PCs. They were tracking uh, what we did, also you know, Windows and documents and so on, but also they were literally recording screenshots as if it was a video so they could see everything done by the analyst and track it. I think they also had video in the room. So they were really, you know, they were under the microscope of yeah. how does this person operate, trying to get insight into what makes an effective analyst. And so I noticed that you're recording this conversation right now. Tell us about what you're wearing around your neck. This is a sense cam. This was uh, created in our Cambridge, England lab by Lindsay Williams. And it is a sensor-enhanced camera. It uh, has a light level detector in it. So when I go outdoors and it sees it's getting brighter, it'll take a picture. Uh -huh. It has a passive infrared detector like in a burglar alarm. So here it's detecting that you're near me so it wants to take a picture. It also has accelerometers though. So when I'm walking or jiggling, it says, oh, that would be blurry. So I'm going to wait for that. And a timer that it goes off on. So we get all these automatic photographs taken uh, as well as the record of the sensors in it. So in your book here, you talk about health and you talk about life. And as you're thinking about measuring things individually, what's the ultimate value? Is one point of measurement enough or do I need to have multiple ones? One thing we found is that bringing together disparate data sources is critical. Right mm -hmm. now you have data in different silos where my email is off here and my photos are off here and things are in all these different places. When you bring them together, you start taking advantage of the cross-correlation between them. Mm -hmm. One thing relates to the other or you find things via the other. It's so important. And the experience of having, like for instance, having your pictures together with your location, it helps you find things, but also enjoying it, we can now see ourselves traveling, where we traveled and what the pictures are, or I took from my GPS trails, I uh, took a shot of that of where I walked down the beach in Hawaii and sent it to my dad to show him, here's how you can go down the beach and here's where to cut through the Marriott to get to the Starbucks. So that sounds very familiar to what we're experiencing, this concept of mashup. It's not just about collecting the information, but it's also been able to correlate across multiple places at one time and mashing it up so you can come to great conclusions. You also talked about this idea that what we're talking about now and where it's going to be so important in 10 years from now is because it's possible, it's becoming affordable, and it's becoming beneficial. Are there other parts of your life where you see the, the benefits of measuring things beyond what we've talked about? Oh, absolutely. I mean, as you mentioned, we, we look at health alone is going to be enormous. We're going to be a huge impact on people's individual lives and what they are able to track with their health. Just having better records is estimated to save billions out there. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to see when we anonymize that data and share some of it, that we'll be able to do huge health studies and do data mining on what's going on with people's attributes of their bodies and so on, like never before. With devices, we've barely begun to imagine. I mean, starting with on-body devices, in-clothing devices, and someday in your body. So that alone is wild. It's going to rock learning. I mean, education is going to be really changed by what, what it means to have a complete record of your learning story, mm -hmm. you know, both for what we think of as kids and students, but all of us now are lifelong learners. And so it's going to impact all of us that way. It's going to change work and how effective we are and how our organizations, you know, transfer jobs between individuals. It's across the gamut. We say it's going to change everything. So if you thought inside your organization that you were just surrounded by machines that were recording things, now well, what you're telling us is everything's going to be recording your body and you're going to have a lot of data points to correlate in order to get a complete experience. Jim, thank you very much for spending time with us. Uh, of course, everybody should go out and get the book, but if uh, they want to get access to you or maybe uh, get access to your thought leadership, where do they go? They should look at totalrecallbook.com. And, and we have a blog website. there that will keep them up to date with the latest. Thank you very much. A pleasure. Until next time, I'm Bruno Aziza.